Throughout the world, over 25 million people earn their living by growing coffee. The vast majority of these farmers are paid only once a year after they have delivered their coffee. For the rest of the year, farmers and their families are often forced to stretch their money and their food supply until the next year's harvest. The result is seasonal hunger, an experience so common that from Mexico to South America, it has its own name, Los Meses Flacos, the Thin Months. And increasingly, our global trading system has leaned toward the specialized production of commodities, which is very efficient in certain ways, but it does bring considerably higher levels of risk in certain remote areas where farmers cannot readily depend on markets, on viable markets, to secure food because they're all growing much the same thing in a region. So it, the, the risk is elevated when you're dealing with commodities of any sort. Coffee is one of them, but all of them face the same challenge. No podemos estar tan pobres y somos los productores, somos los dueños de la materia prima. One of the key strategies in fighting hunger is helping coffee farmers return to a more diversified farm. Coffee cooperatives, nonprofits, and the specialty coffee industry are supporting pilot projects that teach fruit and vegetable production, food preservation techniques, and how to market what they produce locally as an additional source of income. Me creé en una familia muy pobre. Y yo sé que yo de pequeña he trabajado así de doméstica y, y eso es mientras uno no trabaja, no come. A three-year project headed by international nonprofit Save the Children is helping 750 families in northern Nicaragua. Many of these families live on less than one dollar a day. Critical to their survival is the ability to grow food as well as coffee. Here, the practice of creating home gardens is being reintroduced. Save the Children is supporting families with training and with seeds. El proyecto significa primero que es una seguridad alimentaria, que el mismo nombre lo dice, que es una seguridad alimentaria. The whole specialty coffee industry is focused on quality, and I think companies need to step back and take a look at the basis of quality. Families who are growing specialty coffee, particularly small-scale farmers will invest in quality only after they're able to feed their own families. They're not going to feed their coffee plants before they feed their families. So this is the challenge. You know, we have an industry that's very focused on sustainability, and yet here is something that is just so fundamental to life and also to quality coffee that it really needs to, needs to be dealt with on an industry-wide scale. The thin months arrive with the rainy season in Central America. While the landscape is lush, farmers' pockets are by now almost empty. Heavy rains and frequent landslides make it difficult for farmers to grow their own food or to get it to market. The food that is available is often beyond the farmer's reach. El frijol, bueno, el azúcar, sí, se sube mucho el precio. Más ahorita en el tiempo de agua, pues que a veces nosotros no tenemos mucho recurso y a veces nos, nos vemos muy difícil pues, para comprar todas las cosas para, para pasar el tiempo de agua. Como ser humano y como padre que es uno, va el trabajo, el esfuerzo que hace uno es para los hijos. Pues. Lo poco que tiene uno es mejorarlo pues, para que los hijos no lleguen a sufrir pues, carencias. Heifer International is a global nonprofit dedicated to ending hunger and poverty through a community-based partnership approach. In southern Mexico, Heifer is working directly with coffee-growing communities to diversify their sources of food and income so they are not completely dependent on coffee. Para uno pues nos va bien pues porque ya tenemos otro tipo de ingreso, tenemos otros otros trabajos ya no solo el café. 
porque a veces también es cansado. Yo buscándole pues de cómo tener pues también para la papa. No, no solo quedar así seco, por ejemplo. If your business partner in any business was starving, was facing periods of chronic malnutrition or illness, would you not be interested in addressing that? So once we know, once we see these hidden causes, I think it's incumbent upon us to do something about it if we're calling ourselves partners. Working with them, providing what they need, really makes a difference in the long run. It's what distinguishes real developmental impact from charity.